So I'm back from Barnes and Noble. Welcome to my channel because I don't think I have an intro, but hi. So today I went to Barnes and I typically like don't go to Barnes and Noble thinking and like knowing I'm going to go in and buy something. I don't, I don't really leave with anything. Maybe sometimes I leave with, with like one book, but I'm not really somebody who goes to Barnes and shops and buys but like giant halls of books, especially now that I work at a library, I just go with library halls, right? But for my birthday, one of my amazing coworkers, she got me a $25 gift card to Barnes and Noble. And then another coworker for Christmas gave me $5. So that was $30 uh, for Barnes and Noble stuff. So that's like one or two books. And then for Christmas, my grandmother gave me $40. And she was like, listen, you cannot put this in your savings. You need to spend it on something that you want. And I was like, Hmm, I'll put it with my Barnes money, right? So I had $70 to spend at Barnes and Noble and your girl, she has a haul. Uh, and I just, I don't, I'm like not, I don't go into Barnes and Noble being like, I'm buying books. It's like Barnes and Noble is usually an I'm gonna spend two hours here and look at books and then leave empty handed type of trip, right? So I actually brought my book bag, which shout out to another coworker who gave me this, gave this to me for Christmas. It is uh, Flourish and Blots. So it's very small. Quickly found out that it was not big enough for the book haul of today. But um, I'm just excited to show you guys the books. You know, I'm trying to get more comfortable filming in public, but it's still awkward. So I'm sorry if the B-roll wasn't that good. But the first book out of the bag is Binding 13 by Chloe Walsh. This is an incredibly floppy paperback that is 600 pages and has such small font size. But this is really well beloved. Um, and it's one of those books that you're either going to really love or not like at all because it is like a, an extreme slow burn type of romance and I was reading the back of it and I was like what in the Wattpad like this is <laughs> this is bringing me back to my Wattpad era and my Wattpad days and I was like you know what why not this is something that I've actually like kind of wanted to read for a little while like not a long time but this is something that I was just kind of like in the back of my mind it's been there I wanted to read it and I wanted I went into Barnes knowing that I wanted to see if they had this book and so when they did I was like okay I, it sounds like it might be a little cheesy but it also has so much fandom around it that it's not just cheesy maybe it's not cheesy at all but it's just like super well beloved and while it might remind me of Wattpad I may it's probably not maybe it's a little bit I don't know I haven't read it yet but I'm excited too I don't know what this is about you're not going to get a description out of me for any of these books because I don't know what a lot of them are about all I know is that it's a romance and it's apparently a YA romance which means this book this book that is like 600 pages bible thin paper font size this tiny was $15 that's 
that's amazing. Like that's perfect. And all of this time and and like dedication to a book that was only fifteen dollars. Like I, I love that. I love that. So I'm very happy to have this on my shelves. And the spine's cute. So I almost wanted to get the sequel to this one, but I was like. No, my days of buying sequels to books I haven't read are over because they never end well. So just the first one, and if I like it, then I'll have to go back to Barnes maybe and get the second one eventually. Next up in the tote, we have the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition of Aragon. So this book, I feel like, has regained popularity um, with the release of uh, Murtog, which is the spinoff series of this, I believe. And while it might have regained popularity, like, on BookTube, at my library, this series has always been one of the top circulated, aka checked out, books in the entire library since it came out no matter like it's been 20 years since this came out and it's still one of the most uh pop like most popular circulated books in my library so i kind of have been wanting to try it and then i saw this barnes and noble exclusive edition which has blue sprayed edges but no matter what copy i grabbed they were not very well done and that's like that's the exclusiveness of it so i just thought i'd get it give it a try have this cute edition I mean it has so much love behind it and it's so popular that it's like it's gonna be good like it's one of those books that you know is gonna be good no matter what because of how beloved it's been for how many years like Harry Potter Hunger Games all the exact same situation so you know those are good I read them I like them this is gonna be next up. This is some sort of dragon book. Couldn't tell you. I don't know. I read the first pages of all these books in the store because I wanted to make sure that they actually like the writing style of them. Um, and I did. So I don't the first page. I like the writing style, but I don't know what it's about. Next up we have Oh my goodness, well I saw this. I've not heard anybody, like nobody, talk about this book. But it is a debut novel and it is Hunt for Eden Star by DJ Williams. And it's got a very glossy cover. But this is the first book in a, I don't know if it's a trilogy or what it is, but it is like a boarding school murder mystery, I believe a little bit of science fiction as well and it sounded so good and I read the first chapter because the first chapter is like three pages in Barnes and Noble and I just was really I really liked it and I also love that there's a male main character in this book because right now I'm just sick and tired of all the women okay like let me get a break from the women I want some males so this is his sister's death revealed an epic hidden war now he must join the fight and that's all I really know about it but it's a debut young adult thriller which whisks readers into a wildly exciting supernatural page turner set in a lush jungle of the Philippines the high energy streets of Hong Kong and a historic boarding school laden with secrets does that not just sound so good? And I don't know. It just seems like it's going to be really stinking good. I'm not going to get my hopes up too much because I have not heard anything about this book. But I just put it in my bag and it was like one of those things where I was like, I'm going to get it out before I buy all the books and think about it. But then my mom just took me to the, the, the cash register and I was like, okay, so I'm getting it now. I completely forgot I had this in my bag until we bought it. So yeah, this was $15.99 if you were wondering. And this one was also $15.99 because these are all YA books so they're about the same price um yeah I'm excited for the hunting for Eden star it seems pretty good okay and then next up I got seven faceless saints by MK Lobb love the cover of this one I don't know if this is a duology or not because it does have a sequel but this sounded pretty good as well it's like a multi point of view book it says the saints were merciful all the stories said so, but the stories also said they craved blood. Um, and it is, I think it's kind of like second chance. It's like it's a YA fantasy, like romanticy. So there's like a little bit of a second chance in here. Because as the youngest captain in the history of the Palazzo security, Damien is expected to be ruthless and strong and to serve the saints with unquestioning devotion. But three years spent fighting in the second war of the saints have left him with deep scars and a fear of converting, no, con confronting, I'm sorry, it's that day, uh, the girl he left behind. Now a murderer stalks 
Ambrasia's citizens, the Palazzo is all too happy to look the other way until a disciple becomes the newest victim, Damien and Roz, who is the girl must team up to find the killer, even if it means uncovering old wounds and digging up buried emotions. With darkness closing in and time running out, will they be able to save the city from an evil of power so powerful that it threatens to destroy everything in its path? I don't know. It seems like a fun YA fantasy book, and I'm like, I'm wanting some YA fantasies, and this is another one that I grabbed so and then the last book I actually got which no, it's gonna take y'all by surprise okay Ta -da! oh right I also got a bookmark I'll show you guys that in a second but, but I actually forgot to show you guys the bookmark I got so I got this bookmark and it just says be strong and courageous which is first chronicles 22 13 it's a bible verse so it's pink do they like pink no but we already have the teal one that my Barnes and Noble has so I got this pink one for six dollars so. so I got the do-over by Lynn Painter. it's a Barnes and Noble exclusive edition and look at this oh my goodness this is so beautiful first book that one in the bag I've never read a Lynn Painter but Haley Pham loves Lynn Painter loves her to death gives her book six stars you know what I mean and this actually kind of sounded pretty good and I was like this sounds good but I want to make sure I'm not just buying it because the the pages are beautiful so I read the first page and I was like you know what it actually sounds pretty good too I don't know if I like the type of paperback this is because it's pretty like heavy but it is basically about this girl who is like I think it's second I don't know what this is because it's a girl uh, Amelia she gets stuck in a time loop on the day that her boyfriend's cheating on her I have no idea, like, what? Like, who is she going to fall in love with? Um, oh no. In addition to Joss's reoccurring infidelity, Amelia can't get away from the agnamic, agnamic Nick, whom she keeps running into, sometimes literally in unfortunate ways. So it's a, ro it's a, it's a YA romance between Amelia and Nick. And I've never run a, read a Lynn Painter, but I just thought this was a good place to start because of how pretty it was. And... Yeah, she's got, Lynn Painter has some other books, so if I like this, then perhaps I'll get those. And yeah, that is everything in the bag. So I got um, five books at Barnes today, and then I actually, one of the books that I wanted, they didn't have, or they had, but they couldn't find, so I don't know if somebody put it in their bag as well or something, but it was this book right here, um, Ultra Processed People, and I actually... I ordered this on Amazon on the way home. So that is another book that I got. It's a nonfiction book about us eating super processed food, how to tell it's processed, what to do, what to eat. So you're not eating super processed food, stuff like that. But these are all of the books I got. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Of course, me talking about the books is longer than the, longer than the B-roll because can't shut up anyway love y'all so much tell me if you've read any of these and if you like them i i'm excited to read them i'm not gonna i want to read some right now you know me i want to read some right now but yeah i'm going to add all of these to my february uh tbr jar like pulling so maybe we'll get some of these new books in that and yeah i hope you guys enjoyed i love y'all so much thank you for watching i'll see you guys on the next one adios au revoir salut hey do and oh, goodbye Mwah.